They are gardening tools and principles older than the mountains, and one such tool is the oya, which is a vessel used as an effective slow release irrigation for plants. I'm showing you a modern day take on how you too can make your very own. Right guys, let's show you what you're gonna need. You're gonna need two terracotta pots. Please, terracotta unglazed, very, very important, okay? And to the same size, all right? And in terms of size, I would go with nothing less than a 17 centimeter pot for it to have any desired effect. So 17 plus is a good thing, all right? When you're buying your pots, make sure that they've got a hole in them or else it means you're gonna have to go and drill the hole yourself, okay? And we're trying to make life easier here for you guys, so this is what we've got. Now, next up, you need something that's gonna be um, what we call a stopper. Um, Afrikaans has a beautiful word, a stopperki, yeah. So that's gonna be the stopper, which we're gonna put at the bottom, and the other one's gonna go on the top. We're gonna need a bit of silicone. Uh, we're gonna need a dowel, and that's gonna be our measuring stick, and a koki, and then this is an alternate, but so pretty. I'll explain this to you a little bit later. It's not essential, but I like it. Okay, so let's get started. This is what's gonna happen, guys. I'm gonna take this guy, this is our, and this is actually a, um, one of those plastic foot feet that you can get at a local hardware store. Um, take this, and I'm gonna be using that to put in there, okay, do you see that? It works perfectly, it actually fits right in there. But what I want to do is, I'm gonna put a bit of silicone around it to make sure that it seals properly, and that is the whole point of it. Okay, so here we go. Happy with that? Now we take this little guy and we're going to pop him in so that he gets right in the hole here. Oh, beautiful. Look how perfectly that fits. Get him in. Squeeze him into place. Okay, and then take your silicone gun here and just pop a little bit more around that joint. Perfect. Alright guys, I'm just using my finger just to smooth this off here. Get rid of any air bubbles. And most importantly, you know, when you're using silicon, water has a funny way of finding the weakest link and working its way through there. So make sure that this is all nicely sealed. There we go. I am 100% happy with that. Beautiful. Okay. All nice and sealed. There you go. It's around. All we've got to do now is wait for the silicone to dry, but we've got a few more steps in between, and then we'll show you exactly how this guy operates. All right guys, next step is that we're gonna take this guy, the one that we've sealed, and we need to join him to there, okay? Now this is the upside down side, okay? But don't stress about that. I'll show you exactly how it works. So, put you there. I'm gonna take a little bit of silicone, and we're gonna go around the edge here. Okay, so this requires deep concentration from me <laughs> to make sure that it goes all the way along. There we go. Lovely bunch of coconuts. All right, now what we do, take this guy, pop him on top. You're gonna find a lot oozing out the sides and that's okay because we use that bit of excess. Make sure it's nice and right on top. Got it perfect. Then you take your finger and you just use that to all the way around and that helps it seal it off. Lovely. putting the last bit to good use up there. Clean off the hands and folks, that's the most difficult part. You leave it to dry for 24 hours and then we're ready to put this baby into the garden. With the silicone left to cure for 24 hours, it's time to install it into the veggie garden. I want to just move it a wee out the way. Um, we've recently planted this lemon tree. <laughs> it's still got a long way to go but there's a lot of soft veg around it and we know that this guy needs long, deep sips of water. So to make sure of that, this is the perfect place to put the pot. So kind of quite close to it, um, I'm gonna get digging and, oh, that's nice soil. Get this out the way and let's make the hole for our oil pot to get into. Right. Okay, let's put that guy aside. Let's get a level base. 
Now all that we do is we take our oil pot and we pop it into the hole and the depth that we ideally want it to be buried to is just about there and not over there. Okay, so let's take you little guy and brilliant. And what we can do now is take some of this excess soil and we can just start filling back. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Looking lovely. And there we have our oil pot is ready for action. Always the best pot, guys. When you get to water or fill it up with water. So take off the rose and pour the water in. But we do have an easier way to work it out. Take a dowel, pop the dowel in there, pull it out, and we know that we've still got a way to go. So I can put at least another watering can in here, which makes me very happy. To make sure that you've got this close at hand whenever you're going to be working, just make a mark there. So that's your marker stick, and you know that Pull it out and you can check where your water level is. Nice and simple. Now, it's important if you have just planted something to not only just put the oil pot in, please water the plant as well because as you water the plant, so the water then starts permeating. You can already see the water is moving through the porous terracotta pot here. And when those water bodies meet, it creates something called capillary action. So the roots will actually start drawing the water from the, the pot and that is why this symbiosis works so so well. Remember I spoke about this little guy? Well you can either use that as your lid which is quite pretty or you can take the other stopper and you can just pop that on there and there you have it nice and easy because that stops the evaporation and that is your Ola pot. Um, all I want you to do is Every two weeks, you need to come in and check on it, top it up, and you'll know that said lemon tree is going to be entirely happy.